Mr. Potty's plums. Mr. Potty looked at his plum tree. It was covered in big fat plums. Mr. Potty licked his lips. He loved plums, but so did the birds. Every day Mr. Potty came and looked at his plum tree. Soon the plums would be ready for picking. Yum, yum, said Mr. Potty. Chip, chip, happily sang the birds. One morning, Mr. Potty saw some plums lying on the ground. They were half eaten. Mr. Potty looked around. He saw seven birds sitting on the wire. Hmm, he thought. Early next morning, Mr. Potty crept up to his plum tree. There were the seven birds having a feast. Shoo, shoo, he said, waving his arms. The birds flew onto the wire. Mr. Potty knew if he didn't do something, he wouldn't have any plums left. That afternoon, Mr. Potty went into his shade. He banged and hammered. When he came out, he was carrying a scarecrow. Now he thought this will frighten away those greedy birds. The next morning, Mr. Potty hurried to his plum tree. Around the scarecrow lay more half-eaten plums. Right, said Mr. Potty to the birds. Just you wait. Again, Mr. Potty went into his shade. This time, he came out carrying an old blanket. This will stop you, he said. He fetched the ladder and climbed into the plum tree. He tried to spread the blanket over the branches. Instead, Mr. Potty got so tangled up in the blanket, he tumbled onto the ground like a ripe plum. Ouch, he said. Chip, chip, happily sang the bird. That night, instead of going to bed, Mr. Potty sat in his chair. How could he keep those birds away from his plums? If he didn't think of something, they would have the lot. That would mean no plum pies, no plum jam, no plum cakes, and no fresh flat plums, plums to eat. Oh dear, oh dear, he sighed. Then just as the sun was rising, Mr. Potty had a brilliant idea. He picked up his backpack and went outside to the sunflower tree. He climbed to the first sunflower and collected half the seeds from the flower head. Then he did the same to all the other sunflowers. After he had collected the seeds, Mr. Potty hurried back to his kitchen, where he made a special mixture. As soon as he had finished, he went outside. He ignored the seven birds pecking at his plum. Mr. Potty took one of the seven sunflower seed balls and tied it to the tree far away from the plum tree. He whistled as he worked. There, he said. Two days later, Mr. Potty took his biggest basket up to the plum tree. Not one plum had been touched. But the seven sunflower seed balls were almost finished. Excellent, said Mr. Paul. Later, the smell of the plum jam, plum puddings and plum cakes drifted up to the seven birds sitting on the wire. Mr. Potty sat and ate and ate his fresh fat plums. Perfect, he said. Chip, chip, said the birds. The end.